A new report that includes the surveyed opinions of 4,500 Africans from Kenya, Nigeria and Ghana has revealed that a recent wave of technology innovation coming out from the continent is changing how Africans view the continent even as it revealed that 9 out of 10 Africans, that is 91.7%, are likely to use technology solutions that are made in Africa. Many African countries failed to achieve their development targets, partly as a result of underdeveloped and underused science and technology, as well as limited invention and innovation by both the private and public sector. So just how do we build capacity? That's our focus on the show for today. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadoni. First off, the Lagos State Government says there is no going back on enforcement of the ban on motorcyclists, popularly known as Okada, come September the 1st. The Commissioner for Transportation, Frederick Oladende, dropped this warning while giving an update on the ban at Alausa, Ikeja. Uh, let's take that report as put together by Love Ikuku Oyedogun. It all began in June this year. The Lagos State Government ban operation of commercial motorcyclists, also known as Okada, in six local government areas and their respective nine local council development areas, including all major bridges and highways of the state. After a review of its success, the government took a step further by extending the ban to four more local government areas and their respective LCDAs. This brings to 10 the local government areas where Okada operation is prohibited. The Commissioner for Transportation, Frederick Oladeinde, says there is no going back on the enforcement date. Before the last briefing, we had earlier reviewed the achievement and challenges encountered by the state government through public engagement at the Stakeholder Forum TAG Okada Ban, What Next, which was held on Tuesday the 16th of August 2022. In line with this development, the Ministerial Committee on Okada is here again to further re-emphasize on the need for total compliance with the Okada ban as the commencement date of 1st of September draws near. In fact, that is tomorrow. The government has also warned that both the riders and passengers caught violating the order would be liable to three years each in prison, while the affected motorcycles will be impounded and crushed in the public view. Anybody caught riding Okada, both passengers and the riders, will be sent to jail for three years. Uh, the law backs it and we're very serious about it. So let's begin to uh, think about um, this ban and what the government has put in place. The government is serious and the government would implement and we have all the um, uh, enforcement agencies backing the government to ensure that we implement this ban in the 10 local government areas and their respective LCDs. The additional local government areas are Kusofe, Oshodi Solo, Shomolu, and Moshin, with affected LCDAs including Ikosisheri, Agboyiketu, Isolo, Ejibo, Bariga, and Odiolowo. According to the Commissioner, the Nigerian Police Force with all relevant security agencies, including the Army, Navy, Air Force, within the state have been directed to complement the anti-Okada squad to stimulate seamless implementation and enforcement of the ban in the affected areas. From Lagos, Love Ikuku Oyedokum, Plus TV News. Well, moving on, the Africa Innovation Impact Report, which was compiled by Token Drum Communications, a communications consultancy that works with the African technology companies and Survey54, an artificial intelligence-powered market research company, revealed that four out of five, that is 84.6% of Africans, stated that recent development in African technology had impacted the perception of the continent. Well, joining us now to discuss tech capacity building in Africa is the CEO and co-founder of Black, George Omosun Jr. Uh, Black, 
is involved in building tailored solutions for the African ecosystem to offering technology as a service on a subscription basis. Thank you, George, for joining us on the show. Thank you very much for having me, Justin. Good yeah, to be it here. It is indeed our pleasure. Let's just uh, dive in straight to the uh, topic for today, tech yes. capacity building in Africa. You are an advocate for it. Tell us more about this. Yes. So um, I believe that tech capacity building is perhaps you know, one of the most important things that we will do um, for the African you know, economy. And the reason for that is um, tech as, you know, as a subject is a catalyst, right? Um, and what that basically means is that when you have you know, a solution to a problem, tech basically, the tech component basically allows you to be able to solve that problem in a more efficient manner and to be able to replicate that solution you know, across a larger group of people, right? And why this is important is because building capacity in tech um, has both social and you know, economic impacts. Social from the standpoint of, if you look at the African space, there are a lot of you know, challenges and a lot of traditional solutions that we currently have in place. But once you introduce the tech component into that, so imagine that we build you know, the capacity of the you know, local tech talents that we have to churn out solutions, you know, innovative solutions to these problems. What we will have is you know, a plethora of you know, diverse solutions to these challenges that we have. And that has social in impact. You know, you have more job um, um, opportunities. opportunities, obviously, because there are more solutions and solutions mm. give rise to job opportunities. And then from the economic standpoint, there's currently a global demand for um, tech skills. You know, so um, obviously looking at the, the, the foreign, considering like the foreign exchange standpoint, um, Africa is advantaged because naturally our um, tech services um, you know, converting it to the global, you know, mm. market currency, which is the dollar, um, is more affordable, okay. right? So um, we stand to gain by actually investing in local tech talents because we have now you have a bunch of people that can offer um, professional services to a global market at lower cost, which definitely drives you know um, foreign exchange revenue to this part of the world. So I think it's very important that we start looking into you know investing in tech capacity building because of these two major areas: the social impact and the economic impact that this has on the African. Brilliant, yeah. salient points that uh, you have um, actually mentioned. That. But uh, why focus on the continent uh, when you could actually maybe get uh, m more demands or more a larger scale uh, from just um, the country itself? Uh, so Africa is perhaps the most diverse continent on earth. It's very, um, it's 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 very, it, it's very culturally diverse. And if you even look at the, the map of the African continent on the globe, you'd notice that the equator sets right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And this naturally creates, you know, very um, diverse, you know, climate experience that we have. So when you factor in all these differences, you notice that the African continent is actually perhaps the richest in terms of unique qualities, right? So what this means is that it presents us with an opportunity for exchange of value because you have something that Nigeria has that Ghana needs, you have something that Kenya has that South Africa needs, and we, we, we just have all these different differences. Mm. You know? And where, whereas, in, in, unfortunately, in, in, in present times, these differences have, have actually drifted us apart, but what we actually have is a resource, a potential resource, that if we can, we, we can be able to harness the technological prowess in this part of the world to unify mm. these various countries and you know, these various sub-regions of the continent using technologically um, aided infrastructure, then you have a medium for value exchange. Mm. You know, so that's, that's, that's why we focus on the African area and not just you know, on, a, on a single country, because it's hard to, it's actually harder to um, develop a single country in isolation in this part of the world mm -hmm. because you have you are at a disadvantage when you consider trade restrictions and whatnot. So it, we, we looked at it as be, be, being more economically viable for us to implement these solutions or you, you know encourage the advocacy of tech um, capacity building on an African scale mm -hmm. because each nation stands to benefit right. from that corporate. Um, advancement in, in that regard. All right. In all that you've said, you identified some um, deficit or tech deficit in the continent uh, which uh, need to be bridged. Uh, what have you done in that regard? Um, so as a group, 
and you know I'll, I'll use this opportunity to encourage you know other actors in the space um, we're, we're looking at covering you know the entire value chain so from training and education to job placement the entire value chain of capacity building because a lot of people don't realize this but I mean job employment is actually capacity building as well it's just that value is exchanged for capacity building so we're looking at you know investing and we, we're already you know in talks with different partners in the space to actually um, be able to train more Africans um, you know with tech skills and we're hoping that more people can actually get into that 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 initiative as well but not only that we're in talks with you know some of the global recruitment firms to see how we can be able to promote more African tech talents you know to 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 secure job placement as well I believe that once we can cover these two areas you know the education um, module so to speak as well as the job placement module just basically invest as much as we can into these spaces we can definitely see you know a, a drastic improvement of you know tech capacities in this part of the world okay I need to understand uh, what it is that you really do because you have been talking about um, tech capacity and uh, solutions uh, but speaking about it, really, what you do, I need you to explain to me and how you've been able to uh, get the buy-in of um, Nigerians because uh, Nigerians are really apathetic when it comes to homegrown solutions. So what do you do and how have you been able to convince Nigerians to accept um, homegrown solutions? Okay, so I, I think one of the, 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 the values that we're looking to offer is that we've been able to aggregate multiple um, you know, recruitment providers, right? Um, so whereas a lot of companies, um, you know, focus on like a direct um, mediation between, you know, um, engineers or job seekers or people looking to get into the tech space, you know, and just mediating um, between them and the clients. But what we're looking to do is to be an, become an aggregator, right? So referring to like the, the educational aspect of it, which like I said, we're, we're looking at getting involved in actively, we're looking at aggregating multiple, um, you know, edu educators, you know, to see how we can provide people um, access to, you know, educational material over the internet. Mm -hmm. So there are already companies who are pro providing, you know, um, tech um, education or tech training programs, mm -hmm. boot camps, and coding camps and coding academies and whatnot, and are currently rendering this, you know, on an in-person basis. This limits the reach that those companies can have. So as a company, we're looking at how we can create platforms and infrastructures okay. that can pull in these various contributors yeah. and, you know, offer what they have to offer to the African um, domain so that people can be able to benefit from these various contributors both in the education and the training sector as well as in the job placement sector. We're really just an aggregator. Okay. You can look at us as the bridge. Okay. That's a good bridge. <laughs> All right, uh, you're still watching uh, Business Insight on PLUS TV Africa. We'll take a quick break and uh, we're still looking at uh, building capacity in the tech sector specifically, not just for Nigeria but for the continent that is Africa. In a moment, uh, we'll be back to speak more with George and also stay with us. Welcome back. It's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa, and we're looking building tech capacity in Africa. We have our George Amoso. He is the CEO and co-founder of Black, and he's been sharing useful insight on what we need to do to improve on our capacity as a continent. All right, thank you so much, um, George, uh, for staying with us. Beautiful idea that you have talked about. But let's look at the African continent as a whole. You know, that report uh, did very wonderful justice to us. If you were to just um, infer or give your own opinion how would you really say um, our work uh, with technology or technology has actually impacted on the continent? Um, so obviously I feel like it's, it's been a progressive uh, movement so far. It's been a very progressive journey. Um, I like the fact that the, the report highlighted that you know, the African space is becoming more invested in actually patronizing African-made you know, tech products and services. Yeah. Because prior to now, there's been, you know, this narrative that, you know, if it's African, then it's substandard and mm -hmm. it, it doesn't meet, you know, global 
um, global standards, right? So I'm glad that, you know, the rise of these, you know, we have so many fintechs now in Nigeria and, you know, we have these different companies that are doing amazing work. Um, first of all, I feel like it's changing the African mindset towards, you know, what African um, is capable of doing. And this has the potential to further drive, um, you know, the investments of other, you know, African um, you know, creatives and solution providers to create more because it's very encouraging to hear that people are actually using African, you know, made um, tech solutions and tech services. Mm. So yes, I think I think that's that that would be my take on that. Very interesting. I would just want us to t I want you to tell us more about what you're doing for young people. I know that you've started them uh, uh, more like a talent program. I want you to tell me about uh, how the idea was bested and. Um, how Nigerians can indeed uh, get on this particular platform and um, build their own capacities. Of course. Um, so growing up, I was opportune to actually spend, you know, bulk of my life in two major African countries, Ghana and Nigeria. I know they look a bit Ghanaian. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. So this, this gave me uh, a very strong um, empathy for the African people. Just seeing these shared struggles that we have and share challenges that we have. Um, so, you know, it, it, it led to the creation of the idea, which is, you know, the Black Talent Program that I talked to you about. Mm. And um, basically what this aims to do is to, first of all, aggregate, like I said, um, players in the educational and the training mm -hmm. sector um, for the purpose of, you know, building tech capacity. And also on the, on that, the other end of, end of the spectrum, also um, aggregating um, job placement providers to allow people have, you know, I guess a more unified access to, you know, job opportunities. So it's basically covering the entire value chain of, like I said, you know, tech capacity um, building. And for people to actually get involved, they, you know, they simply need to apply um, to our... Okay, well, we don't need to get that. there. All right. So, but let's talk about that before you not get marketing, you know, surcharging me, just on a, a light note. Of course. But are the big players uh, in the Nigerian tech space uh, really doing enough to build capacity of not just Nigerians, but also um, people from the continent? Yeah, so I feel like the, the, the work that's been done so far is very commendable. So I'd like to commend the players in the, in the, in the field and in the industry. But um, I, I, I think there's, there's still a lot we can do um, to really drive um, this development of African tech capacity. Um, so I, I, I'd, really, I'd really like to emphasize you know, more investment in, in training in particular because we still have a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of demand for um, tech talents that you know, we do not yet have the supply for. Um, so really just driving investment in training and you know, in the initiation of boot camp programs and um, hackathons and these various um, endeavors that can allow for you know the African community to rally around the idea of tech capacity building. Just more investment in that space will really go a long way. Mm. So, what? How do you see um, Nigeria playing out uh, in the tech space? Really, because uh, a lot of people are really talking about um, fintech, uh, digital economy, and uh, it seems to be like leading. Just uh, the other day, uh, the government released a second quarter GDP uh, result, and non-oil sector actually boosted the economy. And fintech is uh, one of the major boosters right now. So, don't you think it's actually a place uh, or a sector that uh, Nigeria or Nigerians should be, you know, actively involved, knowing that um, the benefit or opportunities in that particular sector abound. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, and I believe a lot of Nigerians are actually becoming more and more aware of this. Um, not not too long ago, I spoke with you know with a lady who recently started um, you know her path towards. Um, you know, a tech-centered career, and she's been in another industry for years. But you know, it, there's 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 a wave of people becoming more aware of the direction that the world is taking. Um, everything on every industry is is you know has tech, you know, in in its in its DNA in mm. one way or the other. Mm. You know, so just becoming more aware of you know the the, the value that it, that it has or that it poses um, to be to being tech literate mm -hmm. and to being you know and to developing tech skills um, is is really something that I think you know is 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 happening in this part of the world. All right. It's still Business Insights and Plus TV Africa. We'll take yet another break. This time around, we'll be coming back to talk about Business 101. George will tell us more about what he does as a CEO when he's not really working and um, some advice for young um, starters in a moment. Don't go away.
and our guest is George E. Omoso. He is the CEO, co-founder of Black. And he's going to be telling us about um, how he started um, his business and what it takes to be a CEO and what he does when he's not working. Over to you now, George. Um, so how I started, um, so Black was founded in, um, in August. Actually, I think that was around August 2020. That was around when you know, the COVID pandemic was at its peak. And I guess it became more glaring to us, and by us I mean my um, you know, co-founder, the co-founder and I, um, it became more glaring to us how much, um, you know, how much Africa really needs or is lacking um, in terms of certain fundamental technological um, infrastructure because we became heavily dependent on technology. People could not move around as they used to. You know, life, life, life changed for a lot of people, you know, and people had to work remotely and whatnot. So this actually birthed the idea to start a company that solves African specific problems and that, that builds um, you know, infrastructures that allow for people to be able to um, deliver their services over the internet and just connect the African continent a, a, a whole lot more um, using the internet for the facilitation of trade and to also yield um, you know, job um, you know, employment increases and um, whatnot. So um, when I'm not you know, doing my, my work as a CEO at the desk. Uh, believe it or not, uh, Justin, I'm actually very passionate about music. Um, so I spend a lot of the time um, on my guitar or on the piano um, or just listening to music sometimes. Um, you know, at other times I do read, I like to research. So sometimes I like to catch up on, you know, what's going on in other parts of the world, you know, especially in the tech domain. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's just family and friends, and I like to spend time with the family and just relax and chill. Um, so for... Startups. Startups. Um, so just to, to the startups out there, I would say uh, just keep going. Um, it helps to have a really solid clarity as to what you're trying to solve, as to what you're trying to do. Um, so once you have that, just keep going, really. Um, there, there, there's been a lot of setbacks that we've had as a group um, to solve these problems that we're very passionate about. But um, it, it, it helps to, to really just keep going. Um, share your ideas with people. Don't be afraid to share your ideas with people. You'll, never be, you, you'll be surprised by the support that you can rally because there's a saying that when an idea has come, there's nothing as powerful as an idea whose time has come. So just, just keep, keep at it. That's, uh, that's uh, some <laughs> very, very wonderful, uh, useful insight uh, shared by George. Uh, thank you so much, George. Uh, George uh, E. Omoso, he is the CEO, co-founder of Black. And together we have been looking at uh, building the continent's um, capacity in tech. Thank you once again for your time. We do thank appreciate it. Thank you very it. much, Justin. Yeah. That's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Academy. Many thanks for watching. See you again next time. Bye for now.